the world is moving. This is the 21st century. And we believe that the most effective way of supplying uninterrupted, functional, stable, and reliable electricity to the northern part of Nigeria is through our distributed power model, whereby each of the northern states will have an embedded utility solar scale solar source. All the 20 states will be insulated and immune from each other. Once we have, and we have actually made progress in this, as we have uh, interested contractors and financiers that are ready to install a hundred megawatts each for each of the 20 northern states, which is scalable to 50 megawatts at first, then upgraded to 100 megawatts. We are working on establishing what is called a super grid, which is a backup or failover optional grid. If the national grid has a problem, there will be an alternative route through which power can be transmitted. That is what we are working on. Then lastly is the fact that the world has moved beyond having a centralized grid. Grid must be regionalized. We must have state grids so that each of the regionalized grid will be insulated from each other. A problem in a particular line will not affect the others. That is what we are working on. Until that is done, we believe that we will keep managing what we have and reduce the frequent occurrence of the grid disturbance. Well, to break that down, we've got uh, Mr. Kingsley Odor here with us. He is the GMD CEO of Plantrix Energy Group. He's also the former uh, advisor to the former Minister of Power. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Chamberlain. Good morning, Kayla. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Do you know, for many who listen to what he just said now, as far as they're concerned, they think it's sophistry. <laughs> it doesn't suffice for them. So all of this talk, can anybody simply make up this? Well, for the long term, Chamberlain, um, I believe what he said mm. is valid uh, for the long term. But I, I believe the concerns now is where we are, right? Uh, how do we deal with the challenges of um, the embarrassing power situation in the North? Uh, 19 states of the North are currently uh, experiencing blackout. Uh, it means that, um, again, loads of things are suffering, socioeconomic life is it's hampered, lots of businesses are closing down, so many issues. And again, it's been long in the works. So that's the question I was going to ask. Right. When you say for the long term, and I thought, for the longer term, yes. is that to say that the Ministry of Power never saw this coming? Well... You know, it's neither here nor there. Uh, so first, recall that the issues on ground is largely the issues of vandalism and uh, banditry and all of those things up north, and even sabotage, if you like. So if you put all that in the mix, it means that even though you've seen this coming for a bit, your ability to deal with it is going to be challenged. The reason is very clear. One. How do you deal with um, lines that are far in remote areas and you have communities who don't own those uh, infrastructure and then you have people who come and cut those, um, those towers? I mean, it, it's, it doesn't, you don't cut those towers in a day. You cut it, cut it, and then... So I'm sure that people in those communities have to own those assets on the government side how do you provide security to cover lines that are in those very remote locations so well, when pardon me to jump in yes. when you say you don't just cut it in a day no you don't it is over time it suggests that this might happen i mean there's been several reports about grid collapse mm. for obtained time so i would have thought i don't know if it's utopian though that this ministry such as this power would have sat down to evaluate and say, wait a minute, if the grid keeps collapsing like this, how do we avoid an embarrassing situation further? You take a look at your assets. You do your SWOT analysis to find out, look, what do we do to make sure if this happens, we do this, if this happens, we do this. Is it, are we saying that that doesn't happen? Okay, so typically, um, there are 
radial systems and ring systems or whatever, maybe triangular systems. Now, radial systems mean that it's just a one-way traffic. If there is a collapse at this point, if there is a cut at this point, mm -hmm. the entire downstream suffers. Now, the ring system means that if this one is hampered, at some locations, we can always backfeed and then cover this area while we, re while we restore the situation here. But what we have largely in our grid is that it's largely radial. It's maybe for the Benin or Shobo and all of those areas that we've got the ring system. But largely what we have in the, um, in the Shiroro, Kaduna, Kanu line is radial. It means that if anything happens upstream, downstream suffers. So uh, I believe that to deal with this, Chamberlain, is we have to now begin to create systems that are maybe N minus one, creating redundancies, N minus two, which is, means that I can backfeed from two other locations if something happens here. But that is not the case. And that is huge, huge investment, Chamberlain. So it means that, yes, we are going to continue to have these kind of scenarios as long as we have these single lines, radar system driving our networks. Let me say this. The new act, um, act the act that had just been signed, 2023 going to 2024, empowered the states, right, to be able to own it. Um, no, create your... No, not, not own this particular infrastructure, but no, no, they're no, no. Create yours. You, oh, you yeah. can... You, there is a way you can work and collaborate with existing, um, maybe TCN, for example, to say, look, in, the, in, the, in your infrastructure within my state, I can ring first this and pay you whatever. So there's a business arrangement that can happen. Tell me, Chamberlain, I have not seen any state that has been able to do what they need to do to make sure there's a power availability ring fenced within their states. I thought you mentioned Edo. Yeah, I mean, Abia. it's all of the works. We've not seen, okay, Abia because of uh, geometrics, of right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, everything is still in the works. What I expect is states should be mandated because it, it, it's sad that you can attract the investment, you can create the opportunities, and then ring fence your state because if you do that, and state by state have these uh, pockets of ecosystems that generate electricity, it will free the grid from these constant challenges. And that's what the Honorable Minister was saying. He was saying that, look, within each of the northern states, again, what is the, the energy mixes in the northern states will be largely hydro and solar. solar. Now, you can, within those states, agree to say, look, we can invest heavily in the solar infrastructure, which is said that, look, 10, uh, 100 megawatts in each of those 19 states, we believe, those, we hope that those investments, you know, come through. But if it doesn't, we're all, we're all going to keep relying on the national grid that is a cake, uh, infrastructure is over 30 years and more. Believe me, it, it's a challenge for a nation. I, I, I'm scared to even run this kind of responsibilities because you find out that you cannot do what you need to do because the, the infrastructure is old and revamping this infrastructure requires huge investment. Government does not have that fund. So how do we deal with this? Chicken, egg, which one comes first? I mean, I was listening to the minister talk about how the states are supposed to be able to start you know, taking up a lot of these responsibilities and in line with the act, you know, just so they can start to own their own electricity infrastructure and actually start to generate electricity for themselves. But it does sound like, a, a, it sounds like something that will take some time. Hila, Is there an immediate solution to Hila, this? Hila, right you know, there's, for, what, there's a will to do these things. I don't think these governors really are thinking about these things. Because if you are, you don't need to raise the money within the states, create an enabling environment, and bring the investors in. They would bring this investment, they will create this infrastructure, or build this infrastructure, and then you will find yourself reaping. But no, it's not in the thinking. I've engaged with governors, they're not thinking about this. I've had three governors I've spoken to. Mm. It has to be at the forefront of your conversation. It has to, there has to be the will 
to, to, to bring this to the fore and then bring the right investments. Investors look for money, they want investor, they want to invest so that they can bring monies in and make their monies. If you don't create the enabling environment, how will an investor come? And, and with the major challenges that you're facing in Northern Nigeria, security being at the forefront of that. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to talk about something that you mentioned while you were, while we were having this conversation earlier. And, and that was about, you know, when you see vandalism, and it's a very important point to note, you, you can't cut that thing down in no. a day. And you can't sneak it away. Everybody sees you when you're doing it. I remember at this, uh, at the Guarimpa Axis, you know those lights? I remember one time some vandals started sawing them down and you would you would see them doing it but of course you know because of the way we are here in the fct we would call and they would the nscdc were around and things like that and then the guarding of these infrastructure in northern nigeria let me find out from you yes the, the is the nscdc still guarding these these things these infrastructure that we're hearing were being vandalized constantly over time so so we must separate first the act of sabotage and vandalism, vandalism. Okay. and then of course so we, we need to put the criminality in 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 its place and that's where it belongs you know up north is a little tricky the the you know how remote and how far apart and how quiet and how distant those towers are you you i'm sure you've gone to the north before yeah. they run into the very remote arid lands and they just keep going so sometimes it's actually very difficult to, for even NCDC to, to cover and monitor and look at all Mr. of those Kingsley, things. Elections hold in all those places. No, hold on. Let me <laughs> elections hold in all no, those nooks. And <laughs> even in Jaji, Maji, no. which is the farthest part of Northern Nigeria I've ever been to, elections hold no. there. So the point NCDC is, is there during the elections. So, so the infrastructure in all those places... Who's guarding you must them? understand. <laughs> you must understand that election holds in just pockets of areas where I can come and once in a while I can come and have elections, which would happen maybe once every four years for off cycle or in cycle. But you must separate that from monitoring towers all over the country or uh, government assets all over the country, and means that you have to constantly monitor these assets. Now, again, because of the kinds of people in those communities who don't seem to own those assets and look at them and monitor them, you now become, it becomes very challenging for you when some guy comes today, unless, again, they bring all the tools. It's possible. They can bring all the tools, welding machines and all those cutting machines, and then they cut. Once that tower starts to tip over, the line breaks. And once the line breaks, it backfeeds, and then you have... It's like a pack of cards. Once you start, everything keeps just failing until there is a national blackout. So it's, it's a big challenge, and we need to deal with it from two fronts. One, while we re um, stre strengthen the national infrastructure, governors, not only in northern Nigeria, all governors across this country, they have to look at that act and not use politics to say they're acting when there are no deadlines to making things happen. Every state should be mandated to generate two, at least, if, and if nothing, 200 megawatts or 300 megawatts. You must, with a timeline. And every governor must be held accountable to making sure that that happens. Because if you're not looking at it, depending on the grid at every time when you've been given access to, to creating structures of energy mixes that can help your state to industrialize, to, you know, to, to, to improving your socioeconomic standards and all of this. But you do nothing? No. It's not acceptable. You were talking about the buy-in of the people. And, and, and I've said it over and over, I've always believed that it's a failure of governance if the people don't buy into what you're selling. If they don't understand why what you're doing is important, you have failed as well. As, I heard you say that. As, as yeah, a leader, I've always yeah. believed this. How do we change things around? We're here now. How do we get the people to get to, to understand why these things should not be should not be vandalized or sabotaged? So that when I see someone cutting down a pole or, or stealing something, I know to call and say, Oh, look at what's 
going on because these things are happening in the full glare of the people who, who live in these communities. Yes. How do we get the people to start to think differently? So, so it's, it's beyond national orientation. Every time we speak to national orientation or the national orientation agencies have to do the work, have, we are people in our small communities and the clan heads and leaders of those communities, they, everybody needs to put their hands on this deck to make it happen. Because I cannot have people in my community who the, the thief, for example, or the vandal or the saboteur is from my community. He comes with his motorbike and he starts to cut that thing and then we speak our language and we're happy with it. Oh yes, we're dealing with them, but ultimately we're dealing with ourselves. We're dealing with Nigerians. We're dealing with the, look for example, the, the blackout in the north. Um, social economic activities have been hampered. Um, industries have been shut down. Again, the pains, it's everybody's problem. It's not the national problem. So we need to get ourselves to that point, that realization to say, look, look, national assets are our assets. We need to protect them. In our local communities, in our villages, in our towns, it is when we do this, that's where we can enjoy the collective um, investment that we have put in this as a people and as a nation. You know, one thing that seems to, um, uh, the way it comes across listening to you is that we don't have thinking people in government. Mm. You know, because if, if we had, this infrastructure was not built yet today. It's been there for a long time. The same thing we see with several other public infrastructure. It just appears as though, who cares? And, you know, speaking about the laws, yes, they, they have the laws in place. But how can the authorities, are they inexcusable? Of course, they are. I think they are inexcusable. Mm -hmm. To they say that we can't monitor some of these assets. So it means anyone can come from anywhere. And, and sabotage, sabotage us. Okay. And then the whole country is off. Going. This is what it means. Chamlin, I agree with you. And I mean, I agree with you. The, but the challenge here, and, and it's always going to be the challenge is, um, how can, come to your house, let's paint a scenario. A thief enters your house with a mask and... Um, you have your cameras, yeah, and you are in some location, you are seeing him do what he's doing. And when he's done, I mean, before you even get to the place he's gone and he's done the damage he, needs to, he, he, he intended to do or he came to do, but you didn't see him. You only saw the actions, but you didn't see him. You can't apprehend him. So I imagine those remote locations, even though there are cameras and Let's not forget, technology has helped a lot. So there's SCADA, which we don't have. So we, we operate what you call a blind grid. SCADA infrastructure would have, um, would have helped all us. the experts we have in that <laughs> With sector. everybody, no, we've, a, we've, blind we've been grid. a blind grid. It's been a very huge challenge. Whether you like it or not, that is the truth. But we cannot continue to make this excuse um, for these people. So they this have... is government. Government is not us. Oh. Government, is, government is a machinery. Hmm? Government has money. Yeah. Government is bigger than people. There's a reason why you are government and we are people. You're supposed to be able to think out of the box. You're supposed to come up with solutions that will baffle us. But like Chamberlain like said, <laughs> like Chamberlain said, <laughs> it does feel like we don't have thinking people in government. So who are we? Who are we looking at? And and you know how do we solve this now? So Kayla, these things had, like we agreed, had come over time. Again, Chamberlain agrees, and we all agree that these infrastructures have been built like 30, 35, 40 years ago. Some of them are old, some need replacement. Uh, but you see, there's what you call the continuous maintenance of towers, I'm sure. Yeah, so towers are towers. They, and they, you don't need to change the, the, the structure per mm -hmm. se, but you can maintain the structure. Mm -hmm. You can ensure that the things that are failing are replaced. You know, grease, you know, what needs to aham, be greased what, so and things like that. Basically. Yeah. And I'm saying if that maintenance culture fails, which has been over time. I mean, you are here. We're all Nigerians. We see what happens every day. So um, when you need to do what you need to do and you don't do it, it will come back. And that's exactly what's happening. And let's also bring the issue of the sufferings of Nigerians today. So poverty and, and, and uh, a lot of the 
insecurity issues, they've all added in the mix to make it really compounded, right? So you have people who, when they vandalize government assets, they think they're taking the sh their own share of the national kick because of where we are as a people in terms of um, the poverty, the hardship. And Maybe all because of, of what they've seen some politicians do. And I agree. Because, I mean, the politicians... And it's a wake-up call for everybody. The politicians know that we're getting to the end of this. If you don't begin to do what you need to do in your, to serve your local community, to serve um, the, the, why you were called to that position is because you needed to do what you needed to do. And if you're not doing it, then the repercussions are going to be really great. So where we are at is mm. we need to correct this quickly. All hands on deck, politicians, technocrats and everybody in dealing with this. So the president has directed area cover yes. for those who are going to fix some of these assets. The question then is, now assuming that is done and then they fix it with the area cover, are we, can we say for certain that this won't happen again? So Chamberlain, I will answer this. So there was a van vandalization that happened at some point, right? And then they fixed it today and the next week, mm -hmm. <laughs> the very next week, that tower came down again. Why? Because if you don't have a consistent solution that works, we cannot have um, what they call those staggered solutions that would not... We have to have a consistent solution. So minister, the minister, honorable minister, all the key players in the sector must think of ways to see how do we protect these assets, even after they've been fixed. Recall that while, while this had not been fixed, especially the Shiro Kaduna Kanu line, is because even the, the linesmen, their lives are at risk mm. to come fix, the, fix that stuff. So it means that even if they come, if there's no area cover, mm -hmm. if there's no protection, police, army, and all of this, they, even so, they, they will not be comfortable fixing those lines. That security component, because, I mean, at that meeting that they had, yes, I think the CDS was also there. But it doesn't come across as though there is that understanding within security agencies as to what is going on and why this should not even be allowed to happen. Because in some of the claims, you find certain experts in the power sector, they're part of your secret service. You have several kinds of people in secret service in different places to ensure that they point out these things way ahead of time. Do you think we have that figured out here? Um, I, I believe the challenges are poking us in the eyes, and then we must now begin to think of how to deal with this. Truly, maybe before now, but I know, Chamley, that all of us know that these things, as a matter of fact, it's in the public domain, it's in the public space, that look, protect these assets. These assets have been vandalized. And it started with maybe just uh, conductors, and then it, it graduated to, and then now towers. It's actually very grave and bold. You have to be very bold to bring down a 33 kV tower. I'm sure, I'm, they are like monsters standing. Then you start cutting them and cutting them, and all because you want to create chaos. I mean, I don't, know what, to, I don't know what to make of this situation, Chairman, mm -hmm. because it, it doesn't feel like there's a solution. It doesn't feel like I, I, I can't feel a solution. I can't, I can't think of one. And listening to you as well, it does feel like in many ways, well, it, you're damned if you do, if, damned if, if you don't. If we maintain the same infrastructure if without we, alternative first of all, energy mix. First of all, we, we, the infrastructure that was already created has yeah. its issue, mm -hmm. right? Then we now have vandalism. Yeah. Then we now say, okay, let us repair it. Then after repairing it, it's most likely that it will be vandalized again. What can happen? What, what, what should happen? It, and I'm not talking about in the long run. I'm not talking about, oh, we need to change people's orientation. That's something that takes time. As we are, we, <laughs> we are where we are. Huh? <laughs> so we are here now. What, what can happen now? Okay, so what can happen now, right? I, I, mentioned it, I mentioned it in passing. One is that we've got radial lines feeding these areas, okay? Mm -hmm. We can create alternative lines feeding these areas. So that is a solution right now okay right so we create alternative lines so you, instead of having a radial line you have a ring right so if something happens and anything can happen i mean in the u.s it may not be vandalism but it can be storm it can be anything but the lines don't come down because there's a back feed coming from another place so 
In our own case, it's vandalism and sab sab sabotage. And there's no backfeed. And sometimes, no, there is no backfeed. So because it's okay. radial, you know what I mean? So I'm just going forward in one direction. Uh, if I cut this place, all of you guys sucks. are gone, right? <laughs> That's it. Mm. So, but if I have, <laughs> if I have another line feeding this place, mm. it means that while one, I'm sorting this out, you can feed from. I can feed side. from another point. Okay. So, how is it? Because I mean, the end user, yeah. all they are usually bombarded with is appropriate pricing, tariff mm -hmm. hike, this Bands. charge. If for them to hear that, the charges who are consistently talking about all of these charges. I'm not even thinking of to make sure that they all have their own end covered. So it's a, a challenge. But, you know, the Minister of Power, even though many wonder, they, they don't seem to understand what exactly uh, the kind of impact he's having so far. Yes, we know some ministers, additional ministers, will be screened today. And then the question in terms of that is the yardstick for measurement for performance of some of these ministers, even though some are out. But the Minister of Power, for instance, I know everybody say, look, the ASIC is if I don't have it, it is clear, you're not doing much. So since you are in that sector, what can his own ASIC of success or failure be? Thank you very much. It's a very important and very tricky question as well. Mm -hmm. So um, he is, first, he is a finance person. He came into a very core technical ministry. Believe me, he's done very well. Very well because he was coming from some finance background and technical ministries are beyond just administration. You have to have a deep understanding of it. And so he needed to have an understanding and I think he's done pretty well. He speaks the language now there is the jargons of the sector, and he's speaking the jargons now, he's understanding it. So believe me, he's done well. Now, um, he needs to be a lot more courageous. And try, trust me, he, he showed some courage in, in, in trying to say a few things, but the backlash was, was terrible for him. So, like which one? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I recall. No, no, no. I recall telling me. I, I don't recall. Help me. Help me out. <laughs> we can't remember. When he, was, when he was saying that, look, um, for us to manage power effectively, you need to shut down some, some appliances in your home. Oh, that one. <laughs> right. And he meant shutting down appliances like freezer and then... People grabbed on freezer <laughs> and then <laughs> killed him, right? Yeah, because what's his business is almost shutting down freezer. No, but is he it did, the one paying See, his see it's not fair this? what you are doing. No, to but what he said. He, he had a point. The point. He has that, a point. That's the point I was making. Yes, he has a point. We do waste electricity. Where he was coming from is that there's so much waste. Yes, we do waste right? electricity. And that <laughs> you need to shut down appliances you don't need. Exactly. Hold on, hold on. When you say wastage, let's try and put it in context. <laughs> Is it that the discos give it for free to those they didn't take it and then waste it? Or people pay for this and then use it however they want? You know, so, so in that context, can we call it wastage? <laughs> so you know, from your perspective, where your standpoint yeah. is the guy who is paying for all that he consumes. There are loads of people who are not paying for all that they consume. Mm -hmm. Why do we have over 50%. Well, he of, lumped everybody on the same ship. This is the, the same brush. No, you, we, we needed to put it in context, <laughs> right? He okay. just didn't put it in. Okay. Yeah. He didn't arrange it very well. No, we. But he had a point. The point <laughs> was clear, right? Let's manage, <laughs> let's manage electricity. It's an asset, it's something that you buy and you use it well. So manage it well. Don't waste it. Don't put all your lights on when you don't need them, all of them on. Don't put all... If you know your freezer is frozen to a point, you can switch but it off for a bit. But you need a minister to tell us that. Your pocket will tell you if you don't do but that. But loads of people who they're bypass... They're paying, yeah. There are many people who bypass, people so they don't know so, the value. So, so the problem, the challenge with that is, how do we have loads of people when they should have metered everyone We're going so back to people the pay? Yes. So they are inexcusable again. See, Tamlin, you must understand that these things cost a huge sum in terms of do you how no, do but we have local meter can... manufacturers no, who didn't. keep saying that these charts are not coming to us to manufacture meters. They keep telling you they can't meter you, can't meter you, but 
in really are true is they get a lot of money from estimated billing, mm -hmm. and they don't provide the service as such. It's neither here nor there. And I agree with you, but mm -hmm. again, to an extent. No, it's there. It's, it's there. there. It's, it's not there. neither here nor no, there. It's, it's there. there. The metric, <laughs> the metric, again, government is actually doing a lot of work now. They want mm -hmm. to meter everybody as much as they can. I mean, they put a budget in place in the, in the next three years. They want to be able to effectively meter everybody. Believe me, the revenue assurances will be clear because once metering is done, monies are in because with effective metering, you're able to track the losses. I mean, if it's just technical losses, that's fine. But if it is commercial and collection losses, then we can, that can be dealt with by effective metering. I mean, we, we've seen from, from this ministry an increase in how much we pay mm -hmm. for electricity. And I do have to say that in many ways, if you're on band A, you are getting more electricity than before. I can't say that they're sticking to the 20 hour rule, but they, you do get more electricity than you, than you did before. Now, what we expected- That's the one you pay for. That's, that you pay for it. You, you have to pay right, for it. Right, sure. Four, four yeah. units for a thousand, you know. So, but, but my thing is, with all that money that is coming in, and then we still have the same problems. We're still hearing grids are collapsing three times in a week in October, right. you know. Uh, so when we still see all of these problems happening and we're paying more, it makes you wonder what's the money being used for? Is that some kind of explanation as to, you know, where this extra money we're paying uh, goes to? You have to segment the sector, yes. right? So um, you're paying to the discos mm -hmm. who pay for the energy consumed, right? Upstream. So when you pay, you're not paying to TCN in a way. TCN still works with appropriation from government to build infrastructure. And so um, budget, budgetary considerations are one thing. Funding those budgets, are, I mean, certainly <laughs> is another kind of fish. So we're, we're able to budget, but we're not funding effectively. So that, these are the two sides. So I said segment the sector, Kayla, because the monies you pay it's for the energy you consume, right? And that energy is paid for by the discos upstream because recall that the generator must be paid because it gives you this electricity. So the generator generates it and the transmission company wheels it to you and then the distribution company gives it to you to consume mm. and then the money goes back upstream. So the quantum of money that goes back upstream is what we should be are looking at critically, do they mm -hmm. effectively pay for that upstream so that we are so, balanced here? Let's talk about uh, the IPP in ABA. Yes, mm -hmm. because he's got a, they've got a unique mix uh, that bypasses the grid, and I think he's also he generates he can generate transmits yes. directly to the end user without using the grid right. uh, transmission pipelines, and he's also said he told us here that it takes about uh, we asked him if a state wanted to do this. What is the timeline? Is that three years? You can do it in three years. It means that if states or regions collaborate, they can solve this. Totally in agreement with you, Chamberlain. That's why I said earlier that the willpower to do this is really lacking and it's painful because government has given you a blanket, a blanket platform to say, look, generate your own electricity, regulate your, yourself, create your regulatory agency, generate dispatch to your people, and then make the revenue yourself, ring fence it to your state. But no, governors are busy doing all kinds of things but putting energy into this. If I am governor, I would say, listen, you, my commissioner of, uh, for power or commissioner for energy, I give you two years or one year to give me a framework that works. All these things they're passing through, National Assembly has been taking God knows how long. They take this thing, oh, they need to uh, get the laws put in place. Tamlin is all, I don't want to use the word. It's not nice. Governors should take this as a huge responsibility. The, 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 the profits or rather the advantages are enormous. Why would you not find a way? Look at your state, study it. Look at the energy mix that works for you. Start creating those structures, bring the investors, bring them to a round table, have a beautiful session that look, we can assure you, you make your monies. And once all these frameworks are in place, people see that the investments are ring fenced and their monies can come out. 
the monies will come. To so from your perspective, I mean, also being in that sector, do you think that we've got a private sector that can actually do this? Yes, we have. We do have a private sector, but you know, private sector funding is, is they want to see their monies, they want to be able to see that it is ring-fenced, it is the revenue assurance, the pathways are sure. Not, I don't come and say you. Yeah, money meaning the bills that the people will pay. No, they the might likely pay more in some cases. But if you, you know, uh, Chamberlain, if you pay a little bit more and you have the energy, trust me, your self generation is costing you so much. But if you have this collective generation, yeah, in, in your state, and even it's a little bit more, you cannot compare. You pay 200 and over 300 percent more than when you pay even a little bit more for for a collective generation. And I'm saying every governor should look at this. Look at your energy mix. You know there are many small hydros, they call them small hydros, scattered across the country. Mm. None of them are looking at these things. You can do four megawatts here, three megawatts here, to bring the investor. With an abandoned windmill? Okay, the abandoned I've seen that windmill in, in, in uh, Lambarimi. Lambarimi, oh, I, I know that, I know that. I saw it and I was laughing. Yes, it's been there and it's been a conduit. It is unfortunate, it's been a conduit for so many things, and it's not nice. For us, that windmill, the governor, um, Katsina State Governor, if they choose, but trust me, it's, it's the equipment, they are long, long a cake. I can tell you this. I mean, <sighs> let's not go and plunge money into the things oh, that boy. will not work. All right? Another story for <laughs> another time. And that is the so, truth. That is the truth, John. Wow. There's no solution. I guess it rains. It pours, in fact. Well, thank you for coming on, uh, King's Lord. Uh, I hope it didn't dampen your psychological makeup. No. I'm always on fire here. <laughs> All right, business morning comes up now.